star with an indoor heat and swimming pool, tennis court, bowling green, and in a large community centre hosting countless activities. Lakeside by Tom and it's well worth a look. Even though this is a very satisfying sound, it really is just another step in the procrastination that is necessary as one prepares themselves for a session. It's a lot to do with working up the courage to attack the canvas. That's what I mean about thinking too much. If you think too much, what happens is you get beginners with hesitancies, what it is. But uh, this is why, you know, we should really just be painting on newspaper, which has no value. Alright, looks like I'm getting ready to go. I'm just going to dive in there the best way. Just hit that canvas. Just hit it like a freight train. And what I mean about using your animal instinct here is exactly that. It's just going where the strokes take you. Of course we've got things in our mind, but this is more about just going with the flow. I think that what is in our body, if it's in our memory, is just a shape-forming type of being. When we just go to a canvas, and I'm not thinking about anything really, but what tends to emerge are years of compositional training. So that's why it is good to do your forming training. Training from a book where you do learn those rules. And the other thing is your style will emerge and, and that, you know, can be anything from compositional arrangements that you prefer to shapes forming about things you prefer. And I always find that animals pop up for me. They, they arrive in my dreams and they arrive in my paintings and I don't will them into shape. They just come and I allow them to, to show themselves. I'm just using different transparent type paints here. I'm wanting to just map out some sort of vague clue as to what might emerge later on, but at the same time, I don't want to bugger up the surprise that I can get by not constructing the image uh, deliberately. Although you can see that you know, there is a subconscious element where the colours green and we happen to land where the tops of a tree might be because I, I, I am thinking you know that this is probably a jungly type scene I and mean, it has in my pondering I was thinking about that I was thinking about another painting that I had done that I wanted to capture the essence from so you know so that's the pre-loading but how you actually express that even if you do have a style or a, or a topic or a subject, the way you actually get a unique uh, presentation of that same thing when you go to paint it again is by freeing up your um, precognition about exactly what the picture is going to look at, about what the picture is going to look like. This is the exciting part of painting, if you can tap into this and just trust it. And remember, you know, what I tell myself is this is, I'm using acrylic paint here, and acrylic paint is water-based, so it's really easy to just go over the whole thing in white if I don't like where it's going. Um, it's, it's fabulous. I mean, I tend to shift to oils later, but this part is 
I feel much better done with a lot of water splashing everywhere and you don't have the issue of fumes. If you were doing that with terps, um, it might be a little bit of a different matter, which I used to do. Now I have a couple of opaque colours there and they can add in a really gorgeous surprise if you use them alongside the transparent colours. But you don't, you know, I do actually want to fill the canvas, but when we say fill it, it's not as in, um, the, okay, you could leave some holes, some white spaces. Uh, that's another great way of working to leave your dominant darks there. But um, what I'm doing here is I want to fill it, but I, the transparent uh, swaths of colour, in a way, leave the openings, you know, and then you can work back into them. Just heading in there with a bit of that magenta colour that um, I can never pronounce. <laughs> Quinacrinoid or Corolidum, that one, pink. And it's, um, it's great. You can just see that by putting that in there, it really does sing. And I'll probably put way too much in there now. I just don't know. I'm like, you know, when you love something, you just can't stop. And so putting it into the, the golden colour there makes it more brilliant. Orange. The amount of colours, well, I've got a ton. I'm just throwing some water around. I've got a ton on the table, but I didn't end up using all of them. It's just really probably better to use it with the maximum of a half a dozen when you're actually mapping it out like this and then use uh, the technique of blending and sort of scrubbing back into the other colours and even black because. Black does give you some real great drama, but you've got to remember to put some spine in it. At the very beginning, I put some very dark strokes of uh, various blacks. It was a red black as well as a Mars black, and that, that meant that um, it gave me, it's like a spine. So what, what what's happening here is you can sort of see there's a, there is a composition evolving in the center part. It's, there's sort of a, the depth of field starting to want to come out and I'm heading towards it and that's sort of a bit of me being pulled by my style I could say my thinking in a way but I'm still trying to have fun and move around the canvas as quickly as I can um, the music is the only way when you're in this stage I mean I do listen to a lot of podcasts and, and you know when I'm working at certain stages of the painting but I've got to tell you that is totally detrimental to the free creative process it, it, you know you really are just sausage making or it's worse than that actually you are doing book work in a way you, you can't create when you're actually thinking uh, intellectually about issues and having a logical conversation in your head with the podcast Music's the only way, it's where the magic is, where it just allows you to be that animal. I'm just reinforcing some of the darks there, you know, I feel like I've lost them a little bit, but there is a, there is a harmony and a pattern in the, in the painting, see there's a face, can't help myself. Again, I, I'm not really thinking about those, they're just organic sweeps of the brush. And, you know, as I pointed out in my large landscape course, the nature repeats itself all over the place. So, you know, you can sort of trust the way that goes. It's just really about knowing when to stop. And I, I'm not claiming success. I mean, <laughs> I constantly muck things up through not wanting, you're just not being able to stop. But that looks good, I'll keep doing more. But the key is to just leave some impactful marks and then, you know, you need rests for your life. And remember, this is just an underpainting. And look, I could just paint abstract and leave it at that, but I get a lot of satisfaction out of just sharing this process with you. And by, by showing you, you, you can go this way. You can just, this can be the painting. I mean, I would be very happy to just hang these paintings on my wall. I quite prefer it. But... Um, because, you know, I am a commercial painter, so I will take that through to a further, more refined conclusion and pull out a story from it over the coming days. So, I'll be able to share that with you. 
as I go and you'll see but just celebrating the abstract process I think is actually really this part of it is for you this is your food this is where you get to really feed yourself my water is just like mud I've just got a big pile of rags on the corner there that I'm you know still cleaning out probably need a great big bucket really but it, it, you know, it's still keeping that fresh yellow I often um, laugh about painting you know, as opposed to say a digital painting where you've got an iPad and you can work in Procreate or something, you know, the, the, the app, and then you do something you don't like and you can just undo it. <laughs> Whereas with painting, you do it, you stuff it, or you know, you can't go back. It's really quite funny. So we are the last of the great risk takers, I feel. I'm just rubbing out stuff, trying to bring forward some empty spaces, but I'm you know, just scratching with my finger. Sometimes it just gets to this point where you really don't know where you're going to go next, and I'm heading that way. I'm just needing a little break from it and I think that's key but in this case I want to keep everything wet so I can work back into it so the breaks are short you can see those forms there's a hell of a lot of black mass there the rubbing while everything is wet is really powerful because it gives you these smudgy areas and that really equates to texture in your painting. Just going in with a bit of phthalo green there, just a wash and some blue. I've actually cut out bits and pieces from the video. This is pretty long as it is because I played most of it at normal speed. So you can just get a bit of an idea if you want to really learn how to loosen up or do you have to learn? It's really not about learning, it's just about allowing yourself. So my motivation of showing you this is really to try and encourage you to just have some fun. Now, the intimidation, as I said at the beginning, is always about the cost of materials. So really, if you, you know, the issue is if you work on something cheap, oh, here we go, I've just got my white paint, which I've mixed up, pre-mixed white acrylic paint is uh, using cheap materials is okay unless you know the thing turns out really well and then you think oh, I wish I had used something more significant so by dropping in some pure white I'm actually upping the ante a little bit on you know that notion of uh, mixing and blending as I was doing with the darks and it um, it just adds a, you know a, a little bit more interest but you'll see that I just fart I'm really just farting it it can get really kitschy and, and that I can just sort of feel that that's where that's going. So, you know, I need to get out of it, I feel. So on that um, working cheaply or loosely, I guess it is all about whether you are getting attached to your imagery, but, you know, we could say, well, what's the point of painting if you don't end up with a result that you can enjoy? Well, I think that, um, you know, terrific uh, painter uh, from Melbourne who paints on cardboard and, you know, that he paints very loosely on cardboard and that gives him, uh, you know, like a very good way of staying loose but, you know, is it archivally sound? Well, you know, relatively, you know, he puts it under glass. Uh, makes a very powerful statement because it's a great mid-tone. You could do that, get crazy pieces of cardboard, but then you know how do you store them. So I'm just now going to get in there with a baby blue. Th these paints, I, I pre-mix big batches of them, you know, and I water them down so for the, this particular purpose. Uh, so really high quality paints, but I keep lots of the empty tubs and I just make up mixes of them that are really beautiful so I don't have to buy 10,000 colours, you know, that's just probably 
I don't know, probably cobalt with some white in it or something. So just, yeah, putting those loose strokes here, there, everywhere. There's a bit of yellow and a bit of blue. And again, though, you can start to see that there's a story emerging of a landscape very clearly. And most of this has been in real time. So you can see how quickly I can get that mapped out. This, this video is, uh, I think it's a total of about 20 minutes. And I think there's quite a bit of that with mixing and waffling. So yeah, it's quite fun, isn't it? What do you reckon? Do you reckon that if you had a notion of a great big flower, like that, wouldn't that be great? I, I might do one uh, for you and do a great big abstract and use a basis you know, to model that on, or a meditation, you could say. So when I was sitting there thinking earlier on in the piece, I was really just probably subconsciously pondering where am I going to go with this but when I hit the canvas <laughs> when I get the canvas I was just really being uh, you know I wasn't I wasn't there with a with a piece of charcoal designing the composition I was using basic compositional rules with strength in a couple of areas and you know, a bit of a tunnel through to the back again just swogging it on here it's a very important process that comes up after this before um, I'll proceed to the oil and it's to do with just allowing imagination to see what you see. I reckon I might be getting close to no, she's going to keep going. The next stage with your using your imagination to perceive what's in there is the most exciting part of the painting. And, and, and my, my suggestion is, is that you stand a long way away, uh, preferably through glass, somewhere else, upside down, whatever, <laughs> whether you, you go upside down or the painting, and try and perceive what's there, um, what, what comes through from that. So that's why this process has to be like this. It has to be, has to be random because otherwise you won't get those, that connection with the unconscious or the the muse or whatever you want to call it that that is um, going to give you a surprise later on when you come back at that painting and look at it. I'm getting pretty close to being done plenty of rags that it's the only way rags 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 don't want that painting down To me, it's over. Boom goes the brush. <laughs> That's the end of the painting for now. So come back and see me in the next video and I'll take it to the next stage. And thanks for joining me.